Time to learn another classic ending. If there was a top three of the most classic endings, this would be one of them. What I really like of this lick is that it's very simple and effective, and it falls nicely under your fingers over your fretboard. By learning this lick, you will also learn how to connect the most common major scale pattern and the most common major chord grip, as well as your dominant chords and a substitution for that dominant chord. Here it comes. The major scale ending as played on Dinette on the 1950 recordings by Django Reinhardt. Let's go. Quick warning, the original 1950 Dinette's recording is in the key of A flat. In this lesson we will learn it in the key of A. As usual we will learn the lick by slowing it down and splitting it in parts. We will split this lick in two parts. The first part and the second part. The first part of this lick starts on your D string and you will have three notes. On the seventh fret, the sixth and the fourth. Then it moves on to the A string with three more notes on the seventh, on the fifth, and on the fourth. We will also add this last note on your E string on the seventh fret. The second part of this lick begins on your E string on the 6th fret, moves to the A string on the 7th and ends on your E string again on your 5th. All together. So once you learn these two parts and you start being able to play them together, it's time to understand how this lick works. So that way you'll be able to use it on any other major tune, in any key that tune might be in. How do we do this? The answer is always the same. Check the harmony. So there's two ways of looking at this first part of the lick. The actual chord is your E7 and the line goes to the 5 or E7, your B. But in reality, it's simply a A major scale descending. So let's try and see how that descending line fits within a A major chord in this position. This, the closest voicing you can find and the simplest in this position is this A. And that descending major scale starts from this note. Always try to see how the line fits inside the chord. Here comes the second part. The second part is where things get more interesting. On the second part, we get this B flat. Now what is this B flat? This B flat is actually the flat fifth of your E7. Still, also at the beginning of the second part of the lick, there's an E7 harmony behind it. So an E7 chord is built on the one on your E, on the major third, your G sharp, on your fifth, your B, and then your seventh, your minor seventh, your D. So a B flat is, is your flat five. How do we see a chord, an E7 chord with a flat five in this position? Play your regular E7, play the five, on your E string as we've seen before and make it flat. Now that is what really that B flat note is in itself. It's the flat fifth of your E7. It can also be looked at as the root note of a B flat seven dominant, which is a substitute for your E7. So what we're talking about here is the Triton substitution. It's a long topic. I'm not gonna dig too much into this, but you want to know that any dominant chord can be substituted with another dominant chord built on the flat fifth of your original dominant chords. 
Now that sounds scary as hell, so let's make it simple. Long story short, in our example, in our lessons today, we've been working with this dominant voicing. The triton substitution is another dominant chord built on the flat 5. Now we know this is the 5, let's make it flat. Now this has become the root of your B flat substitution. This is your triton substitution. So your E7 can be substituted by a B flat 7. They sound kind of the same. So those are the two reasons of that B flat. It's the flat 5 of your E7 and also hints to a potential B flat 7 harmony as a substitute for E7. So let's rewind again. First part, the ascending major scale ending on your 5 of your E7. Second part begins on the flat 5th of your E7 and then moves on to your root notes of your E7 and ends on your 1, on your A. Hey, thanks for watching! If you like this lesson, don't forget to hit the like button, to share it among your friends and obviously to subscribe to Gypsy Jazz Hangouts. On this channel we will put more contents, more video lessons and tons of licks and phrases for you to practice and dig more into the Gypsy Jazz style. So this is all for today, I'll see you to the next time.